Hello, I'm Chris Jenkins, SSL's Director of Commercial Applications and Product Designer for the C100 and C10 broadcast consoles. Together with my colleagues here at SSL, we have created a suite of software options for these two consoles that we call production assistants. And today I'm going to give you a tour of the latest in the series, SSL's CPlay software. CPlay embeds a fully featured audio playout system into the C100 HDS or C10 HD broadcast consoles. Audio file playout systems for spots, sound effects and music are of course an essential part of everyday broadcast operations. Before CPlay, broadcasters had to install dedicated playout systems in addition to the console. These separate systems occupied valuable studio space and also meant that the operator had to manage two different systems during changeovers. Now we've designed CPlay so that it has a number of key advantages over existing hardware or software playout systems. Firstly, CPlay is embedded into the console, with all setup, editing and playback control done via the central touchscreen and the console's hardware controls. No other external systems are required. Second, most settings in CPlay are project specific, so that when an operator recalls a console project, the CPlay project is also recalled, reducing the number of systems the operator needs to load during changeovers, streamlines his or her workflow, and minimizes opportunity for human error. Third, CPlay is a dual player system as standard. It has one player which supports 5.1 or stereo playback, and a second stereo player which can play multiple cuts simultaneously. The players have three different modes designed to offer an optimal control interface for different types of production. The fourth advantage is that all files are stored in a shared network storage system and format conversion is automated during import, which makes bulk imports from an editor or library straightforward. And lastly, a comprehensive cut edit system lets you edit non-destructively in any mode so you can create multiple cuts or loopable segments from a single source file by trimming start and end points and setting fade in and out times. So that's the introduction. I'm now going to take you on a quick tour of CPlay. Let's first look at navigation and control. The main CPlay user interface appears on the console touchscreen. To access it, I hit the CPlay menu button and it opens in whatever the last active state was, in this case, player one in vCart mode. What you see in the main user interface depends on which mode your selected player is in. We will look at the various modes in detail in a minute. I can toggle between player one and player two here on the touch screen, or I can do the same using the master encoder left-right keys. The master encoder can be used for navigating menus and lists, and pushing the encoder selects or triggers playback of a cut or playlist. I can trigger actions like stop, pause and loop on the touch screen. Or I can assign any of these functions to hardware keys or free keys on the console. There are four free keys on each channel strip and up to 76 via the bank's soft keys or touch screen user keys. And of course they are saved for each project. The assignment of functions to keys is very versatile. For example, here on my player one channel strip, I've already assigned the loop cut function to a free key. So if I'm listening to a cut and I decide I want to loop it, I can just hit loop. The fader start function can be used to start and stop the players. CPlay functions can also be triggered via GPIO ports. Here, for example, we have a custom-built 10-button shot box mounted on the top of the console, but this could be located anywhere, and it could have up to 96 buttons. Each player can be assigned to any channel on the console. Once assigned, the channel screen shows player status and shows me the current player mode. In vCart mode, it shows me the clip I have loaded, together with its start and end times. During playback, the display shows me a timeline progress bar with a warning flash one second before the end of the clip. On the C100 HDS, this display replaces the pan box, and on C10 HD, it replaces the Iconics display. And you can still control the two players from free keys, fader starts and GPIOs, 
regardless of whether the CPlay main interface is on the touchscreen. Now let's look at CPlay's three modes. First, vCart mode. This is the default mode, and it emulates simple cart replacement style hardware players. It displays a scrollable list of files and folders for each player, with cut names and durations. Flipping between player 1 and player 2 determines which is the active file list controlled by the master encoder. You can see that I'm in player 1 here. To play a cut, I simply select a cut and use the encoder switch to start the cut playing. I've got on-screen keys to pause the cut playing. I can then restart it by hitting pause again, or I can stop the cut playing. I can use the on-screen follow-on key to line up the next cut to start playing as soon as the current cut ends, creating a playlist on the fly. If I want to create a playlist I can save, then I need to switch to playlist mode. Deselecting playlist returns me to the basic vCart mode. Cuts displaying a little arrow on the left have been assigned to a free play trigger. But before we look at free play mode, let's have a quick look at playlist mode. Playlist mode is where you assemble and edit sequential lists of files, which you either can play out automatically or control manually, for example in a commercial break. You can see it looks similar to vCart mode, but you're looking at a set of playlists here rather than single cuts. Now let's look at free play. Free play mode is designed for a fast paced show or a project with a set palette of sounds, for example a game show or a light entertainment show. The trigger page shows 16 programmable touchscreen trigger keys for rapid random access to cuts. There are six pages like this, which gives you 96 trigger keys per player. Each on-screen trigger key shows the name of the assigned cut and the start and end point on a moving timeline, similar to vCart mode. If I play a cut using its trigger key, you will see that one second before the end of the cut, the key outline flashes green. In addition to the on-screen trigger keys, we have the option to trigger remotely by GPIO or assignable free keys. If I want to change the order of my cuts on the six trigger pages, it's easy to swap trigger keys. I simply enable swap, select the trigger key I want to swap, followed by the key I want to swap it with. In free play mode, any triggers that you assign are saved with the project. PC-based playout systems, of course, don't do this. I could have both players in free play mode and scroll between them, or I might have player one in vCart mode, I'll toggle to player one, and player two in free play mode. Both players operate completely independently. So that was an overview of the three player modes. Now I want to quickly show you how you can edit a cut. The cut edit pop-up is the same in all three modes. I'm in vCart mode here, so I select a cut and then select cut edit. This is where I can top and tail my cut, add fades and adjust cut gain. I do this with the master encoder. To select trim, I select start and use the encoder to trim the start point. Using the left-right keys, I can jump to cut tail, and again, I use the encoder to trim the cut end point. And that's our new edited clip. I can audition the edited clip simply by using the encoder switch to start and stop the clip playing. To listen to the end of the cut, there is a pre-roll function to play two seconds from the end of the clip. If I want to adjust the gain of the clip, I touch level. This assigns the master encoder to trim the gain in 0.1 dB steps. Alternatively, I can bring up a calculator pop-up to enter gain values. You can use the calculator to enter any numeric value in the cut edit page. If I want to add a fade in or fade out, I simply hit fade in or fade out, and once again use the encoder to set the required fade in and out time. I can save or save as. 
If I hit Save, this stores the new values for the cut playout parameters. If I hit Save As, I can create a new file name for my edited cut. Both Save and Save As are non-destructive. You are just saving metadata. And now that I've finished editing my cut, I hit OK to return to the page from which I access the Cut Edit window pop-up. I mentioned creating a playlist on the fly in vCart mode. Normally we would want to create and save a playlist that we can load just like a cut. To do this I need to be in playlist mode. You're seeing here the playlist that I've already assembled. To create a new one I go to the top of the list and select new playlist via the encoder. This brings up the playlist pop-up. I can then use a append to build a playlist hitting the encoder to add sequential cuts to the playlist. Or via the insert command, I can insert a new cut above an existing cut in the playlist. By default, in playlist mode, each cut is played out automatically after the previous cut. Or by turning off the auto function, I can play out each cut manually. In auto mode, the player crossfades between cuts automatically using the values entered in the cut edit page for each cut. The playlist can be subsequently edited using delete to remove cuts or move to rearrange the playlist order. I then save my playlist, give it a name and it's now in the directory and can be accessed from either of the two players. You can also edit your playlist easily by selecting playlist edit which brings up an existing playlist ready for editing. The last topic I want to cover in this video is file management. The two audio players access audio cuts from a single audio library which exists on the BlackRock internal drives. Anyone in your office can be given access to the CPlay files via your local network. On the desktop you can see shortcuts to the two network folders that contain the CPlay audio and the CPlay playlists. If I click on CPlay Audio, then I can see the existing folders that contain the CPlay Audio cuts, exactly the same files as you saw on the touchscreen. This is where you can add or delete cuts and create your own folders. If I click on the playlist shortcut, you can see all my playlists, again, just as they appear on the touchscreen. Playlists are saved in standard M3U format, so can be created offline if required. To back up your CPlay Audio and playlists, you just need to back up these two folders. You can, of course, name these folders whatever you like. The essence of CPlay is simplicity. We designed this playout system to be used by any broadcast engineer in any studio in any part of the world. By embedding CPlay into the console, with all setup, editing and playback control done via the central touchscreen and the console's hardware controls, we've made changeovers easy and reduce the opportunity for human error. As you can see from this short tour, at one end of the complexity spectrum, CPlay offers very advanced functionality for the management of audio file playout for complex live entertainment, game shows and news productions. At the other end of the spectrum, CPlay can be seen as a simple and intuitive system for playing out audio that's easy to learn and use.